Good morning, good morning. Now, you see, in Africa, we put a bit of uh, <clears throat> oomph, <laughs> and we do it in style, okay? So, good morning, good morning. And then when you say, praise the Lord, you say, praise the Lord. When you say, praise the Lord again, you say, praise the Lord. Okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. You know, we are about the joy of the Lord is our strength. Things is a great joy for us to be here. And thank you, pastor. You have an amazing pastor. I met him for the first time, and I liked him forever. <laughs> so it's such a joy for us to be here. Uh, please, you may be seated. I'm here with, uh, I don't know, people call, you know, this thing about the gaffer. Uh, I, I discovered it here. Uh, it's not something we are used to in, in Kenya. Um, but, but, but anyway, I have my wife here. So is she, what is she? If I'm gaffer, what is she? Gafflet, gafferet, gaff, what, what is she? Gaffa, gaffa. <laughs> or the gaffa of the gaffa. <laughs> right, my wife, please. My, it's just Dina Kitoto. Please just uh, stand up and wave your hand. such a joy to be at King's today and um, the rest of what was said is just titles down here. What matters is what you live for. See friends, we, we, have a, we have a life to live. The question is who are you living for and what are you living for and what would your story tell? Because it's all about the story. God changed us to make a difference. But church today is about coming in and hearing the, 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 the new word, the, the revelation, the, th the new thing pastor is gonna say. But you know the gospel is still the same, it never changes. We can quote it the way we want to, but it's still the same. God calls us for one mandate, and it never changes. I know what, Pastor, when I, I stand here and look here, and I, and I, and I look at your church, um, and I say to myself, this is a, a beautiful taste of heaven. Just looking here and seeing every tongue, every nation, under the living God, the King of the church in King's Church. It's not now about anyone or anything but him. You see, certain words stand out when I think about how God sees us. He says we are salt, we are witnesses of the, resurrection, the resurrected Lord. We are light. We are basically agents of change. See, we are active ingredients of change. When you look at the words light and you look at the word salt, salt permeates. It changes where it's been put. We are not changed as salt, we change. We were created to change. We were not created to be changed by, that's why ladies buy the salt and know I will preserve using this salt or I will cook my meal and season it with salt. So Jesus was very careful when he used these words in referring to us. He said, let your light shine. That means you have the power to permeate your environment or you can choose 
to not let. Because though you are called the light and the salt, you have the power to let it have an effect. Otherwise, you remain with the name but have no power of change because it's dormant in you. And so I said to the Kenya Assemblies of God, the AOG in Kenya, I said to them, we can either have a name of this great move of God, of the Assemblies of God, or we can be those that are making a difference every day in our spaces, in whatever place God puts us. See, Jesus talked about him coming to complete the task. He's being here and he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Your will, my will, sorry, your, your, your will, my will, my desire, your desire, sh my, my, the reason for living, my reason for living should be to do the will of him who created us and put us here. So you are in an office somewhere, you are a businessman, you are a worker, you are a mom at home, you are a, whatever you may be in your space, you're a change agent. So here we're not talking about those who will come to the stage and preach or those who will go to the market and shout out the name of Jesus, but those who will let the light shine in every space that they are in so that they are making a difference for the King of Kings so that the light of God is multiplied in our generation. But when I ask, who is changing the culture of the world today? Who is determining the culture? Who is determining the behavior and the mannerisms? See, when Jesus encountered the rich, the poor, the corrupt, the immoral, the downtrodden, he gave them hope and a new purpose. It is he who calls us salt and light. See, in Luke chapter 7 and verse 36, this woman, the Bible says that a woman in that town where Jesus is, Jesus has been invited to go and have a quiet meal with these religious leaders. How dignified. But there's this woman who decides, huh, I've heard Jesus is going to have a meal there. I'm not going to wait for any invitation to come because nobody's going to invite me anyway. I'm not the type who will be invited. So I'm going to, Ken, Kenyans, we call it get crushing. What do you call it if somebody, you crush somebody's party? Yeah. You go uninvited? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, she, she knows hey, this one, this one is about get crushers, not about the waiting for an invitation. These guys are too proud to invite people like me. Hallelujah. See, the devil will not allow you to make it into the presence of God. He will fill us with thoughts, with ideas, with things that will pull us away from his presence. But we, we, he's there seeking Shall we be like this woman with the issue of blood and, and, and crawl into that presence and say, if only I could touch the garment? Or shall we be like this woman and say, I don't care what they think. I know. I know who I am. But I'm going to break in anyway. Anyway. Do, you, do people say amen here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they, I will break in anyway. All right, I will break in anyway, I will go in. It doesn't matter what they brand me to be, they tag me to be, I am coming in. The way I am, I know he will receive me. I have this feeling in myself. If only I can touch, I know I will get in. I know I will go and worship him at his feet. Oh no, but these days, you know, sometimes we have to be whipped in, isn't it? We have to be kicked in. But you know what? It's all about a woman who is so desperate. 
Can we be desperate enough? You know, we were, in Kenya, we were colonized by the British. And um, we, my, my, na- my middle name, I had a middle name, Pascal. And Pascal was a British friend of my father. Very dignified gentleman. So my father was dignified at the table. Everything was so, so, so dignified. So I would tell my father, you see, you eat with a spoon, or you eat with a fork, or you eat with your fingers, it's going to the same stomach. <laughs> so what is this thing? You, you are, you are s- s- telling us, sit like this. Sit, don't, don't put your... He, my father wanted us to be so dignified, but this woman, no way. <laughs> she says, I'm going to get it all my way. I'm coming in. I, they would rather stop me at the door. They would rather kick me out, but I'm kicking myself in. Yes. Of course, in verse 39, the Pharisees who had invited Jesus... They see what this woman is doing. And they said, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him. And I'm sure you you can see the facial expression, although it's not written there. Who does she think she is? But did they even know who Jesus was? I doubt it. Because they misjudge who Jesus was. Jesus says, come the way you are. Drug addicted, (laughs) come. Sexually perverted, come. In deep financial trouble, come. Whatever tag people put on you, I don't care. I make all things new. See, this is a fascinating story. Jesus moves this woman from a sinner to a forgiven woman. She moves her from outsider to insider. She, she is, Jesus is, is looking at her and, and knows they're treating this woman as an outcast. But Jesus looks at her and knows, no, you're an insider. You're not an outcast. You're part of my family. She was no longer astray, she was a follower. She was now a worshiper. But nowhere, nowhere do we hear this woman narrating who she was or her troubles or her pain or her difficulty. See friends, God is not interested sometimes in hearing where we have been, what we did or where we, we, where we went. But all he's caring for, how is your heart when you come? Are you in total surrender to my will and my purposes? Sometimes we have no words to describe the pain we have been through. But he says, come anyway. I hear you, daughter. I hear you, son. I hear you. See, this woman lived an open life of sin, considered an outcast. But he offers Jesus her best. Her desperation and her deep hunger for an encounter was very evident. She's willing to risk her life and abandon herself at the feet of Jesus. Tears is her language of desperation. See, sometimes I wonder, you know, I used to lead worship when I was called by God. I I led worship and I became a worship pastor and in our church those days, we had these curtains like this one, and it came all the way up to here, and there, and there was some little space behind. So I, I would worship God so, so bad. I'm so deeply in love with Jesus until tears are coming out, and, and my, my hanky is wet, my, my tissue is wet, my tie is wet. I go behind the curtain, I say, hallelujah, Lord, thank you for the curtain. 
I did not care what people thought of me. All I cared is that Jesus, if only I can touch you this morning. So I want to leave you with the first thing this morning. That we need to acknowledge that people have a hunger and a right to know God. You have a right to know God and to know him the way he presents himself to you. See, this morning, this one Asian, as I was leading worship, she walks in. And she say, he says, it was a man, he says, I saw Jesus standing in that corner. He was so brilliant. And I'm saying, da, on the stage, we were all black standing on the stage. See, my mind couldn't even think. And this gentleman had been a Hindu all his life. But you know what he said? I saw Jesus this morning. He came crying during the, the service. See, friends, we need to see healings happen as we worship. We need to see miracles begin to happen, pop up in the, in the, in the crowds. And we see people running to the altar, not because they have been called, but because God is doing a new thing. God is flowing. God is doing a new thing. And God is wanting to bless you. That we will have testimonies that we cannot stop telling. Because he is right there. So knowing that she has the tag of shame and rejection, she didn't wait. She broke out of her jail, sneaked behind the feet of Jesus, not caring what other people thought of her, whether they were, they were, they were held in their legalism and their, their, their beliefs that could not allow this woman to move forward. She stepped up over all those things. She said, all I care is that Jesus this morning you are all I need. How many are saying, Jesus, you're all I need this morning? How many are saying, Jesus, you're all I need this morning? Let me see some hands up. You, 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 are, you came this morning. You're saying, you have to touch me, Lord. See, sometimes we come, we, there's so much apathy. There's so much indifference. We, we think God is the same one we have always heard about. But this morning he's telling you, it is you who needs to change your attitude towards me. And you will see me in a way you've never seen. Break through the things. And see me in the way that you've never seen before. See, indifference can keep sin us away. Indifference can keep us cocooned and jailed and tied up. You see, our view of those who don't believe or our view of ourselves can be our greatest hindrance. But God wants us to overcome the inner scarecrows, the inner bondages and say to him, Lord, every day, I want to be a change agent. I want to be a change agent for your kingdom. See, in their criticism, the Pharisees judged her based on the law and the culture, thinking this woman had no right to be in the presence of Jesus. See, aware of their very corrupted view that their, their understanding of who Jesus was was not based on the word. Aware of this, Jesus still is so generous to provide them with a biblical understanding of who he was. And so he tells them of a story. He tells them of a story of two people who owed money. One was a large sum, the other one was a smaller sum. They were both forgiven. And then Jesus asked, who do you think loved him more? And Simon said, the one with the bigger debt. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. See, friend, God welcomes us. It doesn't matter 
how laden, how difficult the road has been. When you cry those tears in your bed and nobody is there, when you are in that room and you're asking questions about that child that has never been born and yet you know you are in that marriage and God promised you that there will be a child coming, you are still going to press in because he makes all things new. I've seen women, when God told us to start our Tuesday prayer, they will come and their husbands, and, and they would say, I've, I've, I've always been wanting to have a baby. It is now 10 years. It's never happened. And they came back again. It's 11 years. And they kept knocking the door, and they came in again, and it was 12 years, and there was no baby. And on the 13th year, when I saw them coming, I said, God, won't you answer this woman and this gentleman? They have been coming to you. And God looked at me and said, it's all about me, not you. And one day they have gone on a retreat and, and, and wandering out there and doing their own things. She says, honey, I am having a headache. I'm having fever. I need to go see a doctor. I, I don't think I can continue working. We have to go back. So they go back. And the husband continues to do his things. And the lady stays two days. Ah, this thing is not changing. She's losing appetite. So... She decides to go see a doctor finally. And they tell her, oh, you're really sick. You think you're really sick? Say, oh, I feel so awful. I just want to puke. I want to do this. I say, says, oh, be happy, woman, because you are pregnant. 13 years of coming to the altar. I remember one time I'm visiting the States and, and, and I shared a word and I said, you know, friends, God wants, wants us to be simple. Go back to what we know he does. And, and God gave me a word just like that. And he said, there's a woman here. Uh, there's, there's a couple here. They have been looking for a baby. Now, that is scary. In a big church, it was about twice this one. And I said to myself, <clears throat> okay, God, you know I'm an African. Now, God, you know I am visiting. And God, you know, for me to say this kind of thing and uh, it is not even there, it will not look right. So what will it be? What, what are you thinking? Uh, how will I look like? Will I ever be invited again? God told me, stop it. <laughs> Do what I've shown you or else it's okay. I'll use somebody else. So I puked the words out. I said, There's this, this, and I said it very, very fast. <laughs> and I thought nobody paid attention, and it just passed by, and I fulfilled God's desire that has been said. And you know who walked forward? The youth pastor and the wife. Everybody knew. The next thing was, oh my God. Actually, there was somebody. And uh, I said, please come. And my wife and I laid hands, and uh, the, uh, uh, people who love this wonderful couple came, and they laid hands on, on her. And now, the whole of that week, I was in the United States of America. I was dying, resurrecting, dying, <laughs> resurrecting, dying, resurrecting. You know why? My ego. Because we think we must make things happen. Oh, suppose I made a mistake. Suppose it never happens. Anyway, it took two years. I never saw them. I never went back. Phew, I forgot about it. And then they came to visit the church, and I was senior pastor still. Oops. And suddenly, one, of, one person walked to me and said, um, you, you, you visited our church. And you, I remember you gave a prophetic utterance that there's a, a lady that is this and this and would... And I said, oh, oh okay, what is going on, Lord? <laughs> and he said, I came to bring you good news. 
they got twins. And I said, wow! See, God never wants us to take glory of anything. He wants us to be in a place where we are making the difference without even noticing. See, friends, you'll be surprised how God goes ahead of you, fights battles, does things you prayed about, but you have no idea he already went ahead and did something about it. See, Jesus' points, Jesus' point here is, is about forgiveness regardless of where someone is, that God will answer prayer because every soul matters. See, our need for acceptance and fellowship should not be hindered by stereotypes or indifference. See, God's presence should speak affirmation and acceptance. We should be in that place where we know it is in his word that he will accept us. So when it is testifying these days, I don't fear whether I am in a new country, a country I know, I'm, in, I'm flying, I am on the road, I went to do a shop, shopping, my wife and I are always winning souls along the way. Because that's what we are supposed to do. We're changing lives everywhere for eternity. And that's who we are. See, let's not be like Isaiah describes in 29 and verse 13. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, our need for God must be driven by a deep, authentic desire. See, Jesus responds to this woman in her desperation. He tells her, your sins are forgiven. But this woman never asked for forgiveness. She just cried. Jesus defends her. And Jesus forgives her. Jesus already knew before she spoke out. But the sad thing is, when they were criticizing her, criticizing Jesus, could they not perceive who Jesus was? Jesus says to her, go in peace. See, Jesus first listens to our faith, to our cry, to our weeping, even before we think he's hearing us. He wants to leave you and me better. And he wants us to leave others better than we found them. Jesus wants us to take responsibility to make those around us know that there is light around us. See, King's Church, we have a city full of lonely, hurting, a people verbally abused and emotionally abused. People feeling abandoned. People whose lives have come to an end. It is like in Ezekiel 30, 37 when, when, when God carries him by the spirit to the dry bones. See, this encounter and experience reveals how, how, how God knows issues and things before. So in the, dry of the, valley, the, the, the valley of the dry bones, uh, God exposes Ezekiel to this whole valley, the extent, showing him how difficult it would be, humanly speaking. See, friend, it's not how big or how difficult. It's about greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, there should be a better amen. 
Because in that office, you are going to declare, my God reigns. In that home, you are going to declare, my God reigns. In your neighborhood, you are going to declare, my God is the king of the universe. In, did you, did you tell me this is England or English or Britain? Or Great Britain? The bigger one. United Kingdom. That in this United Kingdom, the Lord reigns. How many believe that? How many believe that? And so, signs may tell us one thing, but we know spiritually the light is shining. It's like the morning when the dawn comes and all of a sudden, light dawns on the earth. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why? Because you're alive and I'm alive. And we are still the light. We are still the salt. We are still doing our work. We are still causing our neighborhoods to change. And in the end, his light will be across the world. See, we should not let the past negative experiences continue to shape our current or our future. Second thing I want to leave you with is we need to bring the best out of people as God brings the best out of us. See, according to scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 14 onwards, we hear words like Christ's love compelling us. That we should no longer live for ourselves. That we were given a ministry of reconciliation. That he has committed this message of reconciliation in us. He has committed us to the ministry. You see, if somebody has already committed, he signed you up. God is making his appeal through us to this decaying world around us. And so I, I, I am not going to say, God, our, our city is getting worse, or our country is getting worse, or our this and this is getting worse. I'm going to say, God, your light is shining. And God, you are willing and ready to do a new thing. Yeah. Let me hear some amen. amen. See, amen is about let it be so. I'm seeing my brothers and my sisters getting to know you. I'm seeing witchcraft and everything else that is associated being broken in the name of Jesus. Yeah. See, friends, when we look at this woman, and we look at even the woman with, with the, the Samaritan woman or the woman with the issue of blood, we see things will hinder the blessings of God, whether it's the past. Whether it's people's ideas or thoughts, but we need to break through. We know we need to confront the past or those things because the love of Jesus gives us the affirmation we need to be in his presence. So we can break through the boundaries. And we know freedom will lead to restoration. We know that when we press in, we are going to be productive. And we know we need to embrace this ability to know that when we are fully open before him and we don't allow any cares to hold us back, he comes. He comes. So whether it is in your, in your marriage, whether it is in your life, or whatever it may be, see what God is saying to us today is that I want to be your all in all. Will you be all in with what I want to do? That me and you will be better together. Are you willing to say, God, as you change me, Help me be a change agent. 
And so this morning, I want to start my prayer with, by just asking a simple question this morning. See, this woman knew she needed the change. Just like the, the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus walks with her. Just like the, even Zacchaeus, Jesus says to him, salvation has come to your house. Because you know what? He breaks the norm and even says, I'm going to do beyond to make sure restitution comes, restoration comes. See, friend, it's not about carrying the pain and the anger of the past. It's about leaving it at the cross. So today is, is, is a day that God has been speaking to me, to me and my wife about what he spoke to Joshua in chapter 3 and verse 5. And he said to Joshua, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow, I'll do great things. God wants to do great things in you, in your family, and change what you live for. So we don't live for what is temporal, but we live for what is eternal. Because if God who owns the whole world is truly reigning, he will give us all things. I was telling pastor, you know, when I go to every city, I want to feel the heartbeat of the city so that God can give me a bit of a burden from that city to go with the home so that I can travail for that city, travail for those people. And you know what? That's what God has created us to be. So this morning, let us travail before him and tell him, God, it's, it's you I need. Shall we bow our heads? Remember, this woman did not care. This woman did not stop. She said, I will come. Maybe this morning you're saying, God, I've not even made a relationship with you. I haven't started this journey. With our eyes closed, I just want you to lift your hand if you, if you need to accept Christ today. You've never made that step. I want to start there. It's a great opportunity for you that you may come to have an encounter with him or you have walked away for a long time and you just say, God, I think I need to make my life count again. I'm sorry for my past, but I'm coming again. Make a way for me. Just lift it up. Don't be afraid. This is the right place for you to be. I'll give you a few minutes. If you're here and you need, you need him to come, and give you this new life. It's a very solemn moment because the Spirit always waits for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, you make all things new. When we are wounded, when we are hurt, when we are lost, you're willing to take us in. So this morning, hear my sin, Lord. Surround us with forgiveness with grace, with mercy, that we may know you for who you are and experience you in measures that you wanted us to. So we love you and we bless you. 
and this morning you have things that you're saying, God, I'm carrying things. And I, I, like this woman, I may not be defined like her, but I, I have things I'm breaking through. And I need an encounter with you this morning. I need a moment with you this morning. And you need prayer. You need prayer. I would like to pray for you. You could just slip your hand up where you are. I'll just pray for you where you are. And I believe God will propel you to a new direction of victory. Thank you for those hands. Put it up. Don't be afraid. Just really put it up to Jesus. He sees you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. God sees you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're more than we need, God. You're the deliverer. You're the hope giver. You rescue. You feel us. You, you feed us. You, you do everything, Lord. More than we could ever eat, think or ever imagine. So right now, I release my brothers and my sisters to you. Do only what you only can do, Father God. Break every bondage. Break every, every, every power of, of darkness. May it be in sickness. Maybe they are, they are standing in the gap for someone who is unwell. Maybe, maybe they are standing in the gap for a business. Maybe they are standing in the gap for something that has been held captive by the powers of evil. Father, right now, we pray for a release in the name of Jesus. A release in the name of Jesus. Do what only you can do, Lord. In Jesus' name. And if you need prayer, we'll just give a few minutes. And, and if you came to the front here, some of us will pray with you. As we just take a, a, a few minutes or you're in the aisle or whenever you are there, you're still okay. But if you just need the laying on of hands, we will make that available. So quickly march come here if you need some time to somebody to pray with you uh, we will do that amen shall we sing a song as we we do that okay